Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, to this virtual session. I'm sitting here in Vienna. Unfortunately, I could not come to Trieste. That was my initial plan, but uh, due to this very strange year, we had, of course, all to be very flexible. Um, my name is Klaus Schuch. I'm the scientific director of the Center for Social Innovation, which is an innovation research institute uh, in Vienna, a social science institute. Um, I hope you're doing fine. And I warmly welcome the speakers, the guests of this uh, session, and of course you, the audience, here in joining us in these sessions. I think, I mean, I don't see it, but I think you are hundreds, if not thousands, listening to us now. And I think that's good if you do so, but let's keep joking aside. We have really a very important topic to discuss today, namely how to network the Western Balkans R&I communities towards success. Well, towards success, that's definitely an attitude um, because nothing is so difficult to achieve sometimes like success, but we all doing very good in this uh, direction, I think. And you will also learn that also the Western Balkan countries already did a lot in order uh, to, to get to this success. The session is organized in uh, ASOS career program. And I think this is not by, by chance, uh, not by accident. So it really relates to the early stage researchers and to the future of European research. And I'm personally, personally very much convinced that the future of research communities from the Western Balkan countries will be firmly rooted in a larger European research area. Having said this, um, the scope of today's session is firstly to support awareness on attractive research and innovation opportunities in cooperating with researchers from the Western Balkans. And I think there are some really attractive R&I opportunities. Secondly, to showcase uh, the Western Balkan countries' pockets of excellence and to foster interconnections between the regional ecosystems. This means, of course, the regional ecosystems within the region of Southeast Europe, but also beyond the region of Southeast Europe. And I personally, I have to say, I'm very glad that I could uh, join, so to say, the cooperation with colleagues from the so-called Western Balkan region already since 20 years ago. And I have to say, it was always very fruitful and very inspiring and we continue to do so. Um, it is important to know that the Western Balkan countries are no more outsiders to the system of European research and innovation, but they experienced insiders since 20 years. This means they, since 20 years, they have been participating in the previous European framework programs for research and technological development, the know the rules and regulations, the know how to play the game. All Western Balkan countries have good national contact point systems in place and the Western Balkan countries researchers are well connected. And in fact, they were already well connected after the collapse of the um, real socialist uh, regime 30 years ago, because the region in Southeast Europe was different than the region uh, in, in Central and Eastern Europe. So we had already these connections and they were very fruitful and we could immediately start with this integration despite all the uh, uh, negative aspects in history in the 1990s, of course. What we have now are interesting market on, uh, opportunities in the Western Balkan countries. And we have a lot of innovative SMEs. We have a lot of startups and also the policymakers, which uh, who are responsible for, for research and innovation are building more and more support programs in order to, to, to merge these innovative SMEs and to support them. Another issue which I would like to draw your attention to are the talented students and graduates and of course the researchers. We have a lot of talented students in the Western Balkan countries a lot of graduates who are technically also 
very, very firm. And I can say this because we also face a lot of brain drain. So very good people always go to countries like Austria, for instance. And that's why I really can say uh, the, the qualification of many of, of the graduates are uh, up to the top. So there's no difference, actually, um, if I compare this to my country. And also the Western Balkan countries have had difficulties in the last uh, 30 years to improve their national research and innovation systems. The systems are actually gradually improving. Serbia, for instance, is among the modest uh, uh, innovators in the European Innovation Scoreboard. And also the other countries that are listed in the European Innovation Scoreboard have shown uh, very good, also they're still at the bottom of it, um, but they have shown very good uh, progress during the last two years. Especially um, successful until now is the participation of researchers from, uh, from, from the academic sector and from the business enterprise sectors in the European Union programs. Um, and it is especially very high if you compare it to the available R&I capacities. So if you look at the sheer absolute numbers, it's not that impressive. But if you compare these uh, absolute numbers of those who participate successfully in the European Framework Program in Horizon 2020, especially to the available uh, uh, number of, of, of uh, R&I capacities in the countries, I. I really can say we made a lot of statistics about this. They are, they are integrated um, and they participate, they take part in it. Um, we also see this that the funding uh, for Western Balkan research projects or where the Western Balkans have been involved in Horizon 2020 has tripled since the year 2014. And since 2016, the participation of Western Balkan researchers has increased by 50%. Another um, KPI, uh, which I would like to share with you, is the involvement of researchers, especially young researchers, early stage career researchers, but not only, from the Western Balkan countries in the Marie Sklodowska Curie actions. We have 30, uh, 332 researchers uh, that have participated in, in the programs or in the different action lines. And if you know, and you know it, of course, I mean, how competitive these uh, Marie Sklodowska uh, Curie actions are, then I can say that this is really a very positive figure. So um, I will stop here with my introduction. And I also would like to introduce uh, and warmly welcome um, our guest speakers today. Uh, we have four guest speakers. Um, we have uh, Mariana Brukic from the Center for the Promotion of Science in, in Serbia. We have Nina Nikolovska from the Economic Chamber of Macedonia from North Macedonia. We have Vladimir Atanasovsky. Uh, he's a full professor at the Faculty of Electric uh, Engineering and Information Technologies at the uh, Kirill and Methodius University. And uh, finally, with the last input then, will be from Jana Koller, the executive director of the CERIC, Erik. Having said this, I would like now to give them uh, the floor to my colleague, Mariana Brukic, um, from the Center uh, for the Promotion of Science in Serbia. Just let me say some few words. Um, she is since 2012 actively involved in science communication through the organization of various events, most importantly the Researchers' Night, uh, Researchers Night in, in Serbia and the Serbian Science Festival. And currently she is the local coordinator of the Terrifica project that fosters on climate actions. And she will also tell, you, tell us now and share with us information about this project and about the Serbian R&I system. Mariana, the floor is yours.
thank you, Klaus. Uh, good afternoon from Belgrade, capital of Serbia. And uh, at the beginning, I would like to give you some facts and figures about our country. So um, Serbia has around 7 million inhabitants and among them around um, 12,000 registered researchers in 70 public research institutions. Also, there are eight public universities in major cities, which consists uh, of 120 public uh, faculties. And uh, I come from Center for the Promotion of Science, as uh, Klaus said, and uh, it is a quite unique institution, I may say. It is a public public body established in 2010 by the Serbian Ministry of Science as a part of the strategic development plan in science and research. The mission of the center is to support knowledge-based economy, to be center of scientific culture and scientific literacy, and to bridge the gap between science and society. Also, uh, when CPN was established, the plan was to build the biggest size center in Western Balkans that would serve its regional purposes as well. <laughs> However, due to some complications, uh, as it always uh, happens in Western Balkans. At the moment, we are still in a relatively small space for our capacities. Um, however, uh, I wanted to tell you about uh, how we operate. So CPN also operates outside of the premise, its premises and promotes decentralization of science. So at the moment, uh, CPN is governing and supporting a network of 15 science clubs across Serbia, which among other activities host science exhibitions, workshops, and lectures. Moreover, CPN helped create 10 science parks in public spaces in different cities and established a, a first well-equipped maker space in Belgrade, which is free for all citizens to use. And at the moment, we are helping build maker space corners in science clubs across Serbia. One of the most loving, let's say, activities among citizens is CPN's science truck, which is a foldable truck that becomes a laboratory and the place for lectures and that can reach even the smallest towns. Um, also, CPN has a publishing activity and quarterly we issue a periodical called uh, Elements. And once or twice a year, CPN publishes popular uh, science books. Um, in accordance with its mandate, the center implements programs and activities by working with research and educational institutions in Serbia and around the world. And uh, CPN closely works with ministries in the Serbian government, city government, media and private sector as well. Moreover, CPN collaborates on a regular basis with uh, foreign embassies and in organization uh, of different programs. Um, I would say that most notable educational activities that run yearly are May Month of Mathematics, Art and Science Exhibition, CPROM, which is a regional conference on science promotion, Researchers Nice, and as well as many other workshops, lectures, and popular events related to various scientific topics. And most of these events are actually of a regional character already. CPN is a member of two professional associations, Excite and EUSEA, and readily collaborates with its members. Um, from 2012 uh, onward, CPN is actively involved in international cooperation through participation in different EU projects. And at the moment, um, we have five active uh, Horizon 2020 projects, two Erasmus Plus projects, two cost actions, and one Creative Europe uh, project. And uh, from Viewing all statistics, we may say that CPN is one of the most successful public bodies in terms of number of granted EU projects in Serbia. And uh, most of above mentioned projects are related to either STEAM education, such as Scientix, uh, which is a Horizon 2020 project that represents the largest network of STEM teachers worldwide. And uh, CPN is actually a national contact point for Serbia for this project. Also, for example, STEM School Label um, is another Erasmus Plus project which uh, aims to provide guidance to European schools with the aim to increase uh, in young Europeans' interest in skills in fields of STEM. And uh, we are as well part of this project. Um, on the other hand, CPN has been a part of three RRI projects, also from Horizon 2020 framework, where RRI stands for Responsible Research and Innovation representing scientific research and technological development processes that take into account effects and potential and impacts on the environment and society. 
at the moment, there are two active RRI projects in CPN, RING, so RRI, and a Terrifica project, about which uh, I will tell you a bit later. The other areas of interest that we uh, mostly have our uh, European projects uh, in, their gender equality, which is in a way, again, already a part of RRI concept, then ICT and two topics with the vast future societal impact, which is climate change and artificial uh, intelligence. Um, now I would like to um, talk to you about a bit about the Terrifica project because it is also important for uh, the region. Uh, so it is the biggest uh, Horizon 2020 project running at the moment uh, at Center for the Promotion of Science, uh, which will run for 42 months until June 2022. And the European Commission provided 2 million euros for this project. It is a transdisciplinary partnership uh, involving six European countries. So as you can see, Spain, France, Germany, Belarus, Poland, and Serbia and uh, bringing together three research institutions, three nonprofit organizations, one public association of universities and one public institution for science promotion, which is Center for the Promotion of Science. Um, Terrifica stands for Territorial Responsible Research Innovation Fostering Innovative Climate Action. And uh, since this is really complicated and so long, we call it Terrifica. Uh, and what makes uh, this project different is its co-creation and bottom-up approach with the goal of creating community of all relevant stakeholders, especially citizens around the question of climate change adaptation and mitigation, producing innovative climate action for better resilience of our cities. The Terrifica method is to develop co-creation processes in six European pilot regions where scientists, civil society organizations, policymakers, education actors, and businesses are working together to co-design, co-create knowledge, and co-experiment solutions addressing experienced climate change effects. The pilot region are seen as living labs where the thinking and experiences are continually involving. Um, so, as you may see in this picture, Center for the Promotion of Science is managing city of Belgrade as its core pilot region. However, um, Romania, Albania, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia and Hungary are, all, are also involved in the project through various CPN activities. The idea behind this is that climate change impact us all and close territories have similar climate change issues, so should be studied in a way together. For example, in 2014, deadly flooding occurred across Southeast Europe with overall estimated damage of around 1.5 billion euros and 1.6 billion people affected in certain vein only in Serbia. Thus in Belgrade, we started with a predefined focus related to water issues that was challenged with co-creation workshops where through dialogue with different stakeholders, we could really see what are the questions uh, we could address realistically. So from the focus to on water resources that was broad and covered rural and urban areas, we shifted completely to the question of heat islands that is a major issue in urban environment and an issue that all stakeholders agreed as relevant and manageable at the time being. And that's the point with living labs. So for the past year, we tried to map all relevant stakeholders that deal with the issue of climate change adaptation and mitigation in all earlier mentioned countries in the region. And we conducted in-depth research on best practices and projects involving co-creation methods that are related to the topic. We compiled the guide on co-creation methodology aiming to help also further for future projects dealing with climate change issues. Um, one of the outputs of the project is actually this uh, online crowd mapping tool uh, that is made in order to enable citizens' participation. That is to say that for citizens of Belgrade, Paris, Barcelona, Poznan, Fecht and Minsk, from this year on, a crowd mapping online tool has been provided. And on this map, citizens can pin places where they subjectively feel good or bad in the context of um, uh, climate change effects in their cities. Also, they are invited to propose solutions to map problems. And um, crowd mapping results will serve for future co-creation of micro-action plans between decision makers, representatives of civil society organizations, industry, science, and education that will address map local needs and problems with concrete innovative solutions. 
Further phases would also include interested citizens that took part in crowd mapping process through informing them on the usage of data, outcomes of their implementation in local action plans and workshops. And this is how we want to make citizens truly to believe that they are important and that they can be heard. Um, conclusions and methodology will also further be disseminated throughout the region, so through our countries in Western Balkans, um, through particularly organized workshops in each country. In 2021, we will also organize a regional scammer school where, uh, where we aim to create a network for future actions in the region. Um, finally, I also wanted to mention you briefly um, another regional activity. So um, every partner in this project is different and it brings its own personal agenda and sensitivity, of course, uh, created in their local context in implementing Terrifica goals. So since CPN is strongly committed in empowering and fostering scientific and critical thinking in schools, and so far uh, we created numerous programs to uh, do so, um, we wanted to um, actually introduce a completely novel uh, thing in, in um, our region, and that is uh, citizen science, because it's widely unknown term in Serbia still. And we have committed to create citizen science community. Since we see a citizen science as exactly as a core of education, which fosters creativity and interest in science. Therefore, um, the attention to decentralized crowd mapping activity, test it and place it within the community, um, we decided to launch a regional call. So for all um, countries uh, that is named Green, Greener and Greenest School Yard. And we did this with help um, of uh, our colleagues from Goethe Institute. Uh, and the PASH school initiative. And we invited teachers and students to actually observe, uh, mark and uh, follow climate conditions in their own schoolyards. And we believe that this action actually will raise awareness among students on climate change issues. And uh, since we invited the pupils uh, to propose mini action plans of adaptation of their schoolyard, um, we'll try to help them actually make their uh, ideas come true. And we will try to uh, involve all our stakeholders uh, in a co-creational method to uh, help them also implement their ideas. So um, in the end, uh, uh, I would like to say that we would be more than happy to uh, collaborate with you and feel free to contact us at any moment. So, and thank you very much for uh, this, for the attention. And I will be more than happy to answer your questions in Q&A part of this session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mariana, for this very first and interesting presentation which you gave us. Um, I think it's very important to have this connection to the citizens uh, because the European Union um, should never lose, so to say, this connection to the citizens. It should also not lose the connections, of course, to the researchers and uh, uh, to the business makers. And for the business makers, we want to have our second presentation. But um, before I hand over the word uh, to, to Nena Nikolovska, I would like to invite also the audience uh, to post questions uh, to our speakers. You can easily do this. There's an icon on the, I think, on your right side. Um, if you look at the screen on the right side, um, where you can click on it um, and post uh, questions to any of our speakers. Um, I will then summarize them and uh, so to say moderate uh, this questioning part. The next speaker, however, as mentioned before, Nina Nikolovska, works at the Economic Chamber of Macedonia, North Macedonia, and she's in charge of preparing analysis, monitoring the legal framework of interest to the business sector. She prepares information and expert opinions on legal issues in the field of economy, especially in the field of uh, the construction sector. Since 2018, she has been uh, involved in the trainee project, uh, which is implemented under the Horizon 2020 uh, program, involved in capacity building of the construction industry, and especially there in the field of energy efficiency, the introduction of digital tools, um, and uh, building of, uh, 
building information modeling in the construction sector. So all the important transformative aspects that go together here, efficiency, energy, digitalization, and everything in a sector uh, which is very known to all of us. So Nena, I warmly welcome you and I put uh, the floor now is, is yours, Nena. Hi, everyone, and thank you for the introduction, Mr. Klaus. Uh, in my presentation, I will talk about the trainee project, uh, whose whole name is Toward Market-Based Skills for Sustainable Energy Efficient Construction, implemented by the Economic Chamber of Macedonia. Increasing the capacities and the competitiveness of the domestic companies is one of the main priorities of the Economic uh, Chamber of Macedonia, which is uh, the oldest and the most numerous business association in our country. It is interesting to mention that uh, in two years, we are celebrating a jubilee, a hundred years since uh, its foundation. Uh, with the intention to increase the capacities and the competitiveness of the Macedonian uh, companies, uh, we are uh, carrying out numerous, um, including those founded by the European Union funds. Uh, and the aim of uh, these projects is to support specific economic uh, sector and also to create uh, ad additional opportunities for the companies to increase their productivity, to increase their competitiveness, uh, the capacity of their employees, and also to create uh, new products that are on demand on the European market or to implement new technologies uh, that will increase their um, export potentials. So the construction sector is uh, one of the driving economic sector of the growth of the uh, Macedonian and also the Euro European uh, economy. And uh, despite having a direct impact on the economy, this uh, sector entails the performance of nearly uh, 25 other uh, industries. So uh, sustainable and energy efficient construction brings many benefits to the businesses, to the society and also to the economy. Uh, however, despite by the policies uh, for sustainable and competitive construction, uh, this uh, sector is uh, also affected by several other policies, including those uh, related to energy efficiency improvement and uh, digital transformation of the uh, economy. Uh, Macedonia, as a candidate country of the European Union, is making efforts to follow and achieve uh, EU goals related to energy efficiency and digital transformation uh, that are expected to um, increase the competitiveness uh, of the economy, of the uh, economy, uh, to boost the economic growth and also to uh, create new investment and jobs. As a support, uh, the Economic Chamber of uh, Macedonia is uh, implementing the trainee uh, project, um, which is part of the Horizon 2020 uh, research and innovation uh, program, and also uh, part of the work pro program for secure, clean, and efficient uh, energy. Uh, the project has started uh, in May 2018, and uh, its duration is uh, 30 months. So it will end uh, uh, in October uh, this year. Uh, in the presentation, you can see the project fact sheet and uh, also the information about the uh, project. Uh, I will, in my uh, elaboration, more focus on the project objectives and what have we achieved so far. Um, here you can see the project partners, uh, which are uh, from Macedonia and from uh, Spain. Of course, uh, the project coordinator is the Economic Chamber of Macedonia, which is in charge for management of resources, internal and external communication, and also dissemination of the project uh, results. 
It is interesting to mention that this is the first project uh, from the Horizon 2020 uh, prog program that is coordinated by uh, a Macedonian uh, institution. Uh, so uh, the other uh, partners of the project consortium are the Association of Business and Consultancy uh, Creatia, uh, the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information uh, Technologies, uh, the Engineering Institution of uh, Macedonia, uh, the Adult Education Center, and also uh, the BIM Academy uh, from uh, Spain. Here are the roles of the project partners. And the question to ask is uh, what's new within the trainee uh, project? Um, the particular trainee project represents an upgrade of the results achieved uh, by uh, the two previous projects implemented by the Economic Chamber of Macedonia. And these are build up skills and uh, builders energy efficiency uh, training. Uh, these two projects uh, define the path that uh, needs to be followed for the upgrade of the skills in the field of energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy sources um, of the construction uh, workforce. And also they established uh, qualification and training uh, schemes for uh, upgrading the skills in this of the construction workforce in this uh, field. Uh, the trainee uh, aims to a project aims to expand the trainings and qualification schemes in order to achieve the EU parameters for energy efficiency defined within the uh, strategy 2020 for energy efficiency. Uh, the project is uh, based on one uh, overall project objectives, uh, project objective, which is the creating qualified building workforce and uh, three uh, specific objectives. Uh, the first one of the uh, specific objective is um, to upgrade two qualification schemes and uh, developing large scale of uh, training schemes for blue collar qualifications and red by establishing the knowledge uh, center. The construction sector in our country is uh, specific because a large number of the workers do not have formal education or uh, they do not uh, have uh, documents and certificates for the qualification and skills they have. So uh, the trainee project uh, through its uh, activities enables um, the recognition of the skills and competences by certifying workers, technicians and engineers and also enables the organization of um, uh, informal trainings, um, which are made in accordance with the needs of the construction companies, uh, the business sector and the professional organization. Um, all activities um, that are um, uh, directed towards creating qualified building workforce are integrated within a knowledge uh, center, which is created by the project consortium. And uh, this, um, Knowledge Center um, implements two different qualification schemes. The first one is organization of informal training uh, according to developing training programs. And the second one is uh, recognition of previous learning acquired through non-formal and informal education. So um, on one hand, uh, trainee project provides certified trainings in the scope of the Knowledge Center, uh, which are developed for all occupations in the construction sector and also for all qualification levels from workers to engineers. Um, these trainings cover around uh, 10 uh, occupations, which are expected to upgrade uh, their knowledge on energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, sources especially in the segment of uh, solar energy uh, use. Uh, the, projects, uh, the project involves um, till now uh, 500 uh, professionals, namely 150 technicians, 80 construction engineers, 20 designers, uh, and um, 250 uh, workers. On the, the other hand, uh, the project upgrades a methodology for recognition of uh, previous learning and uh, skills, uh, which was uh, previously established um, uh, within the two uh, projects, Build Up Skills and Builders Energy Efficiency uh, Training. Uh, and it was conducted um, to 1,100 workers. Now this methodology is uh, upgraded in order to involve architects and uh, engineering as well. Uh, the process of recognition of uh, previous uh, learning and skills is uh, part of the lifelong learning uh, process. 
which brings uh, many opportunities for personal and professional development of the individuals, providing them with official recognition of uh, their achievement. Until now, uh, 35 sessions for recognition of previously gained uh, skills and competences were uh, implemented and um, validation of non-formal and informal learning with a certificate was uh, provided for over 360 uh, workers. So uh, the second specific objective is uh, increasing awareness of the building uh, professionals for the use of building information modeling tools. Uh, the training project uh, takes into uh, consideration that along with the uh, creation of qualified workforce, um, we should also focus on the implementation of digital tools in the construction uh, sector. And um, also uh, it uh, takes into consideration that buildings have a long term, a large impact on the long term energy consumption. So in order to use the um, energy more efficiently, provide energy uh, savings, uh, also help to protecting the environment and uh, improve our life quality, uh, we should focus on uh, sectors uh, that have the greatest potentials for um, energy savings, such as the uh, construction sector. Also, uh, digit, the implementation of uh, digital tools can uh, help to achieve the sustainability goals in the energy sector. And uh, digitalization tackles construction, although uh, it is still one of the at least digitized uh, economic sectors. Uh, building information modeling um, is now at the focus of uh, digital transformation of the construction uh, sector. And uh, as three-dimensional uh, process, uh, building information modeling gives uh, the architects, the engineer, and can building professional the insight and tools for more efficient uh, designing, uh, construction, and maintenance of um, facilities and uh, infrastructure. So the benefits of uh, implementing uh, this uh, tool are several, including economic, uh, social, and uh, environmental. Uh, the application of uh, building and the introduction of building inf uh, information modeling on national level um, is uh, provided by uh, several activities, including uh, promotion of BIM uh, in front of key uh, market actors, such as uh, construction companies, uh, public institutions, practitioners, um, organization of BIM trainings uh, that are supported uh, with uh, the that are supported by the project partner from uh, Spain, the BIM Academy, and the uh, development of a roadmap for the introduction of uh, BIM. Uh, the final uh, goal is to achieve and demonstrate energy savings that result from the application of uh, BIM tools and processes. So uh, four study cases are envisaged within the project framework and um, uh, also, four buildings will be uh, cho chosen where uh, BIM tools and BIM processes will be uh, implemented. Uh, the final uh, project um, objective is to improve market recognition of the gain uh, skills in energy efficiency and renewable in the field of energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, sources. So uh, this uh, project, uh, this project uh, enables the and enhances the collaboration among uh, different professional organizations. Uh, also, it uh, initiates um, initiates um, reforms within the Macedonian legal um, uh, framework and also initiates improvement of the policies related to the sustainable and energy efficient construction. Uh, we can conclude that um, the construction sector in our country is uh, facing um, uh, the, uh, the problem with the deficit of uh, qualified uh, workforce, uh, which has, uh, which has uh, the competences in the field of energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, sources field. Uh, and, this, and in that sense, the training project brings a long-term impact and benefits for this sector as it enables the individuals to continue their education and it also broadens their op options for um, career advancement in uh, this uh, field. Uh, however, in order to achieve the energy uh, efficiency parameters, um, along with the creation of qualified workforce, it is important to improve the processes for uh, construction of energy efficiency uh, buildings. 
And the uh, beam uh, is now in the center of digital transformation, aiming to reduce cost, time, and energy in the construction sector. Um, the construction fella is um, already familiar with the new technologies and the novelties they bring in this sector. But the question to ask is uh, to which extent um, are the companies uh, prepared and ready to implement the new technologies in their um, everyday practice? Uh, with it, with uh, its implementation, the trainee uh, project has helped the business sector and has laid down the basis for the introduction of novelties and new technologies such as building information uh, modeling, which will further be improved, updated and applied by the companies themselves. themselves. And uh, in that direction, uh, trainee uh, project also makes the first steps toward the um, the process of harmonization with the EU uh, legislation, namely the EU Directive on Public uh, Procurement, which encourages government and member states uh, being largest procurers uh, in the construction sector to act and uh, stimulate the innovation and uh, the application of BIM on the part of the companies. Thank you very much for, the, uh, for your attention. Uh, this was briefly about the project and um, I welcome all your questions related to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Nina, for, for this uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, I think you mentioned very important things uh, as regards this compliance towards EU regulation and standards. That's an extremely important issue for raising the competitiveness of the whole business sectors actually um, in Southeast Europe. Um, I think it's also very important what you said about these opportunities for energy efficiency in, in housing, in industry, in, in the public sector as well. So um, I'm addressing the audience. So if there's everything you want to know about the construction sector and its modernization activities in North Macedonia, don't dare to ask Nena, post us a question. All right, we stay in the country. Um, and I'm going to invite our next uh, speaker to give his presentation. It's a different sector. Also, it's a sector that's transversal across all the other sectors, I have to say. Um, I'm inviting uh, Professor Vladimir Atanasovsky um, he's Vice Dean for Finances at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information Technologies at the Kirill and Method University in Skopje. And he's also the Managing Director of the Center for Technology Transfer and uh, Innovations. Um, uh, Vladimir was a recipient of the highest national award for research Kolchet Delchev uh, and was elected as one of the top 10 best uh, scientists from his university uh, in 2014. And his current efforts are targeting technology transfer and management of contract research, which I think is another very, very important uh, aspect of a functioning regional and also national, probably also cross regional innovation system. So, um, Vladimir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Klaus. Uh, good day to, to everybody. It's really a pleasure and an honor to be part of uh, this uh, Euroscience Open Forum. Unfortunately, uh, I was really looking forward to coming to Trieste because I've never been there before, but uh, uh, unfortunately for, for this situation, we would have to do it online. Nevertheless, I think that the impact will be, or will be there. Uh, what, I'm uh, what I will be talking today is about uh, um, our recent efforts, when I say our, I mean our faculty and our university, 
in uh, terms of how to improve the cooperation between the uh, academia and the industry, because uh, there, that, that's a very big problem that we face here in, in our country. There is a strong gap between uh, the academic part and the industry part yeah, in the country. So we are trying to make them more coherent and more cooperative uh, towards each other. So um, in that sense, it's one of the motivation for forming the Center for Technology Transfer and Innovations, Innovate, at our uh, at our faculty i am currently uh, the one that is uh, managing this uh, this center so um, uh, what is uh, the center for technology transfer and innovations uh, it's not uh, a classical tt office as uh, some people uh, would think that it is uh, legally speaking, it's an autonomous legal entity. It's uh, uh, owned by the University of St. Kirill and Methodius, but it's uh, completely governed and operated by the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information Technologies. And it was formally established and opened in 2018, uh, even though the idea for its um, uh, formation uh, is uh, rooted back in 2015, 2016. Its main focus is to serve as a central point for technology transfer. I would say uh, we are missing one T here. It's a central point for technology to transfer because uh, our uh, main uh, goal is to actually find the technology that our researchers do that can be then uh, commercialized or can be spin off to, to the industry. It's one of the ways that we are trying to cooperate with the industry and offer the technology that we develop through different initiatives at, uh, at the Fed. Faculty. So it is a central point for technology transfer and uh, at the same time uh, we're trying to be the research hub for our uh, researchers, our academic staff. Um, the idea for uh, opening this kind of center for technology transfer and innovations is not uh, so new as I already said, it was uh, uh, brooming for like two or three years before its official opening. And uh, during those that, that period, we did uh, a scan of our uh, of our capabilities, of the capabilities of the academic staff of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Information Technologies. And we came up with, uh, with numbers that are, are shown here on this slide. We attract uh, more than 700,000 euros annually for R&D from different donors. We have always at least 10 uh, active ongoing projects uh, uh, annually. Our people have co-authored seven international patents. We have published a lot of papers. We publish at least three, uh, 30 papers with, uh, in um, journals with impact factor per year and more than 100 papers in uh, uh, international conferences or international journals. So uh, I can say without being modest that we are the strongest and most successful faculty in North Macedonia with uh, regards to uh, research capabilities and uh, 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 research background. Uh, based on these uh, numbers, what we uh, wanted to do is to improve, enhance, and stimulate the knowledge transfer that we have accumulated through our R&D experience to, uh, to the industry. At the same time, we are uh, uh, dealing with a very uh, big problem in the country, which is the brain drain. Uh, fortunately for the COVID situation, it's a little bit stopped, but nevertheless, it's, uh, it's uh, something that we are uh, basically um, it, it really hurts our R&D efforts, and especially when you lose young and talented researchers. And what we found out is that uh, people uh, would like to have uh, a more attractive work uh, environment and work on uh, innovative R&D projects. So it's also one of the objectives of why we chose to open the Center for Technology Transfer uh, and Innovations. Uh, our idea is to provide uh, excellent knowledge in the areas that the faculty uh, is uh, renowned for. That is the uh, information and communication technologies and renewable energy and energy efficiency. And at the same time is the uh, commercialization of developed technology. Um, if you remember the numbers that I showed in the previous slide, we do have a lot of funding for R&D, but it mostly comes from international donors. The, the local funding is peanuts, 
and uh, industry funding is also very very small it's some it was somewhere around 1.2 percent of all uh, contract research that comes from uh, companies so what we wanted to do also with uh, innovate is to actually increase the contract research services for local and regional industry and in a way provide um, a, a bridge between the academic staff at our side and the, uh, the industry on the other side. Also, it would serve uh, to our needs uh, as a faculty. Uh, we, from 2017, we have uh, new study programs where we try to um, promote problem-based learning or a learning based on uh, solving tasks rather than just making um, ex-cathedra lectures and so on. And in the end, we want to become a um, so-called challenge-driven uh, university. So it's also something that we are pioneering in our uh, academic ecosystem in the country. Sorry. Uh, these, are the, these, these are the areas that we focus on. Uh, the umbrella topic is ICT services for emerging tele-infrastructures. And we have four separate pillars where we have uh, experts and we have papers and we have at least one patent in each of these uh, uh, four pillars. So they're not chosen just because we wanted to uh, to say something about this, uh, this area. So they're, they're specifically interesting. So the pillar one is expert systems exploiting data science. Uh, towards IoT and stuff like that. So uh, this is something that um, a lot of people at the faculty are working on. We have experts then in pillar two for uh, digital signal processing for various applications, real time, non real time and so on. Uh, the third one is something that uh, we currently have a very big NATO project, software defined networking and virtualization, uh, promoting um, a softwareization of mobile networks, promoting 5G and so on. And finally, the, the fourth pillar, renewable energy sources and energy efficiency, where we also have uh, several uh, research uh, contract research for, for, uh, for companies in the country, where we uh, provide innovative approach to um, harvesting energy and storing the energy and using it smartly, let's say. So uh, as I already mentioned, our activities are mostly uh, targeting contract research for industrial partners at the moment. But we also uh, we are part of the university, and we're trying to uh, we're trying to promote our students to the industry and to show them that the industry is interested for them, so that we start bridging the gap as soon as possible, not once they end their their studies. So we are trying to define projects that are of mutual interest with uh, industrial partners. We send contracts, and we try to engage some of our academic staff and our students to work on practical problems. So in a way, they, they have their exams through practical problems. They learn through problem solving. So it's the, uh, the, the problem-based uh, learning approach that I already um, talked about. And we also have possibilities to provide co-working space. Um, you saw some pictures of, of our space. And uh, of course, any expertise that is needed, it's always uh, on disposal for our industrial partners. We are also organizing uh, several workshops and events. Last year was very successful in this, uh, in this sense. This year we were successful up until March, until the, the practical lockdown. But nevertheless, we hope that this will uh, continue. It's a good way to boost local and international visibility of the faculty and the, and the center. We're always in support of uh, startups and spin-offs. We have uh, several startups and spin-offs from uh, our faculty prior to the uh, formal um, establishment of Innovate. But then we have at the moment additional several uh, startups and spin-offs that are uh, trying to find their way in the innovation ecosystem. And our uh, efforts were uh, channelized through uh, our uh, involvement in the foundation of the accelerator of the university. So basically our center is a founding partner and the biggest uh, shareholder in the accelerator of the Sincerely and Methodius University. And we're trying to uh, position ourselves in, in a very specific um, uh, part of the innovation ecosystem that is provide, as I said, TTT, technology to transfer. We are not interested in what the accelerator would do, but we would, would be mostly interested into providing meat for the accelerator to work, to work with. 
And also we are always open for different international projects where uh, the, the center can find uh, its place like practical education, problem-based learning, collaborative case studies and so on. Not classical R&D where the faculties actually uh, uh, can be a partner. Uh, these are the ongoing contract uh, research um, uh, projects that we have. The These four, Renewable Energy Plus Energy Management, IoT Solution for Air Quality Monitoring, IoT Solution for Waste Management, and System for Automatic Transcription of Media are for companies that are receiving um, um, funding from the state fund for innovation and technology development i must say that uh and i must take this opportunity to thank the fund for innovation and technology development for their role in the innovation ecosystem because uh the support for the companies for innovation is something that really uh helped us because these companies came to us they they they, they wanted to innovate they would not they were not able to do it by themselves so we're subcontracting that that thing for uh, for them you can see the Companies here, Thorax, Inform, Pacomac, Analytica, for uh, local companies, where we uh, provide the, actually the innovation component uh, for them. The first project is we deliver a complete system of management of energy, that is clever storage of uh, solar energy. The second one is we developed uh, both hardware and software uh, from hardware and software uh, point uh, sensor for air quality monitoring. And we are also at the moment in the process of establishing an air quality monitoring laboratory that will actually be able to certify the sensors that we produce. Then IoT solution for waste management, we're um, making both hardware and software for um, uh, um, recycling of uh, plastic bottles for the uh, Pacoma company and providing a software platform for getting incentives for people to recycle. And in the end system for automatic transcription of media that would be helpful, that, that is uh, helpful for, uh, as it says, for uh, transcribing uh, information from uh, various internet portals. The fourth, the fifth, sorry, contract we have image analysis. It's a direct contract with a company for, from Belgium for which we provide services in the image analysis part, different algorithms and uh, um, these algorithms will be put inside their product uh, portfolio. Uh, we also have several contracts with companies that have uh, already booked co-working space in, in our center. We have very good cooperation with uh, um, Iskratel uh, because they, they have a, a big office here in, uh, in Skopje with uh, Grabit, which is an IT company, also uh, partly in Slovenia, partly in Macedonia and so on. Apart from the contract research, we're trying, as I said, to be uh, visible in the local innovation uh, community. So we organize different innovation related events. In 2018, we were uh, the hosting partner of Beta Pitch. Beta Pitch is, um, uh, um, is it's, it's a pitching competition for startups, uh, one of the biggest in the world. The finale is always in, in, in Berlin. We are organizing different startup weekends whenever we, we have an opportunity to do so. Uh, since March, we haven't done any physical startup weekend. What we are genuinely doing is uh, the Innovation in Smart Anything Everywhere program, which is something that we started last year. It's a competition that is open to all students from the, the university, not only from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, and it's uh, targeting development of student proof of concepts. Basically, we, uh, one, uh, we, we set, set one day in, at the faculty and we said, okay, we have so many solutions to non-existing problems. Now let's find the problems that our solutions are dealing with. It. And we said, okay, let's open it to the other faculty so that we can uh, share our technology to solve problems from different areas. So the program is definitely um, targeting interdisciplinarity. In uh, uh, last year, we were also local partner in our country for the University Startup uh, World Cup. Uh, this is the public presentation of last year's uh, Innovation in Smart Anything Everywhere program. 
uh, we had seven very successful uh, prototypes that were, the idea is that it's original, that it's a technology that can be demonstrated, it, that it's interdisciplinary, and that it can actually, that you can actually show that, that, that it works. We're not dealing with business plans or market analysis or so on, because we have other entities in the innovation ecosystem to do so. So as I said, we're doing with the actual technology that can be transferred from uh, academia to, to, to the industry that can be afterwards commercialized. And one of the projects last year, this smart extractor here, is uh, currently receiving technical assistance from the EU for Tech project uh, in, in the region. And we are very proud that we uh, established this student initiatives that is being um, that is being visible and that is getting attention from uh, European experts through different uh, programs such as the EU for Tech uh, uh, initiative. The road ahead. Um, some of you may know that uh, 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 as a result of the scanning of the of the of the faculty and the Innovate Center, the European Investment Bank has produced a report where they say that Innovate is the only regional candidate capable of becoming a potential uh, uh, becoming a regional center of excellence. You can find the entire roadmap uh, uh, along with a business plan at the following uh, link at the um, EDIP uh, website. And uh, in a nutshell there, we would need around 2 million euros to kickstart phase one and then phase two. Uh, right now we are operating in this phase according to this, uh, to this roadmap, but we're doing also our, our, our own thing, our own uh, local uh, research. But if we do get this additional funding, this is the plan that we have for around three years of uh, operation, where we would uh, basically uh, intend to create and coach at least six new startups, start cooperation with many companies, uh, uh, expand our international network, and in the end, uh, grow up to 25 full-time research employees. The idea is that Innofit becomes sustainable um, entity that is doing state-of-the-art research is a true center of excellence in, uh, in, in the country. So um, I hope I'm not that much overdue. Thank you for your kind attention. These are some of the uh, channels that we, you can find us on, the website, our LinkedIn page, our e uh, email. You can also drop me an email or whatever you, you feel it's suitable. Thank you very much for uh, uh, your attention. So you can hear me now again. Um, Vladimir, thanks a lot for your interesting presentation. I wish you and Innovate really good luck for your business development uh, aspirations, which you have. I'm very impressed, I have to say. I'm also impressed, uh, not just by you, but also the other presentations until now, about this broad understanding of research and innovation, either reaching out to uh, citizens or reaching out to, to business sectors, um, because it shows this understanding that we're not working in silos, but trying to bring together excellence and relevance, uh, things which are so much uh, uh, demanded these days. Um, I also like very much this approach, which we had on problem solving projects for students, which you do together with companies. I think that's the right approach um, in order to build up also the next generation or opportunities for the next generation. And I know it's not easy to work with the business sector in your countries because you also have to say, to, so to say, to engage with them. And also this uh, innovation ecosystems in your countries are, are emerging. Um, and I think it's very worth, worthwhile to go along in this direction. Um, and also to look, of course, for the cooperation partner, which you anyway do also beyond uh, the national boundaries. Um, we also have had already a first question from the audience uh, on, on citizen science. Um, I will not pass it on now yeah, to Mariana. I will keep it after the next presentation um, because then we have all the four presentations and you, the audience, you have still have time to uh, post some questions to our speakers. 
And the next speaker is Jana Koller. Uh, she's the executive director of Zerik Eric, which is a research infrastructure for the characterization of materials and biomaterials um, uh, established by, with the decision of the European Commission. She will tell you more about this uh, in a few seconds. Um, Jana has a broad range of expertise. Uh, I first met her when she was Director General of Science in Technology uh, at the, the Ministry in Slovenia. Uh, she was also a member of the governing board of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, a member of the high-level group of innovators for European Innovation Council, and also uh, the ERA Council Forum Austria, a uh, high-level expert uh, body which advises the Austrian Minister responsible for science and research. And we got a lot of good recommendations uh, from Jana also to develop the system in Austria uh, further on. She's currently also the Slovenian delegate of the European Strategy Forum for Research Infrastructures, ESFRI, and she's also chairing the board of the Slovenian Research Agency. But what's about Zerik Eric? Jana, you will please tell us now. Um. Thank you, Klaus, for uh, this uh, introduction and also for setting up this very relevant session. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen from Trieste. I hope you could be here. Unfortunately, under the conditions, more than half of the, well, half of the sessions are virtual, but this can also have its own benefits. I would like to thank at this point ESA of organizers to setting up this event so well under these challenging conditions. We have heard in the introduction from Klaus that uh, about the very lively community in research, innovation, education that we have in Western Balkans that is rapidly developing. And the previous speakers have demonstrated this. Now, what I would like to present in uh, this very brief uh, presentation are some of the opportunities for Western Balkan countries that research in European research infrastructures offer. This is a session within careers uh, program and there are plenty of opportunities within our community that Western Balkans researchers can exploit. Uh, I'm, as Klaus said, executive director of CERIC ERIC. This is a distributed research infrastructure which uh, publishes school that uh, offer free merit-based access to some of the uh, very best um, facilities in Central Europe for characterization of materials and for synthesis of materials in a wide range from uh, biomaterials to nanotechnology. We offer access to facilities which are hard to find or non-existent in Western Balkan countries, such as, for example, uh, synchrotrons, neutron sources, uh, ion beams, electron microscopy, NMR, and some laboratories. And uh, up uh, so far, we have just opened the call and uh, we have more than 50 complementary instruments uh, now, for the first time, we have also included lasers from uh, fourth in Greece. Uh, our, we are composed uh, from eight members, member countries, each contributing one facility. There is no transfer of money between the institutions. Our business model is currently that uh, Italy, uh, where our seat is located, uh, contributes the funds for our operations. So we organize calls and we bring the selected users uh, to, to the facilities to perform experiments or they perform them remotely. Uh, on the other side, the facilities and the countries which contribute these facilities cover the costs of support of the users and the measurements. So basically we are funded from various funds, 
uh, Italian uh, national funds and the national funds of all of our members through in-kind contributions and also European funds through projects and structural funds in most of our member countries which invest in, uh, in the equipment. Now, what are the opportunities that uh, CERIC can offer to Western Balkans? First of all, and for foremost, is to the users, to the researchers. We offer, as I mentioned, free open access uh, to high quality research infrastructures, which are often not available to the, uh, in the Western Balkan countries. You can see in the graph, uh, uh, since our establishment in 2014, what was the share of the proposals that we received and granted proposals from Western Balkan countries. You can see that as we are better known, because we are around only for five years. So as we become better known, the uh, number of proposals from Western Balkans is rising. The trend is positive. Uh, however, the uh, submitted proposals are also always a bit lower. The share of, submit, uh, of granted proposals is always a bit lower than submitted. Um, and we need, this tells us that we need to come up with more trainings to demonstrate to the researchers how to use these techniques, several of which are not available and unfamiliar to them. And we're doing that. Now, uh, the, other, uh, I, uh, the other option is, uh, of course, the membership. So a country of Western Balkans could become our member following the peer review by our uh, International Scientific and Technology Advisory Committee. Now, the membership means that the country would need, first of all, to access uh, to, uh, to become a member of CERIC and then propose a facility to which then that would be included in our offer. Uh, currently, Croatia is a member and it co uh, contributes iron beams of RBI, Research uh, um, Ruger Voskovic Institute in Zagreb. Now, in the graph below, you do not have Croatia among the Western Balkan countries because it's a member of the EU. But it would affect the graph significantly because per capita of researchers, uh, Croatia has the biggest number of submissions among the CERIC countries and also the most successful ones per capita of researchers. Now, um, Serbia is also a member. But so far, they, we have not yet uh, a facility from Serbia included in our open access, but we're working on that. Now, uh, membership is important for, every, uh, 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 for various reasons. For example, uh, through uh, exchanges of information also at the management level, uh, you can see this kind of consortia, ERICs in general, distributed facilities, which are often registered as ERICs in various fields, um, as uh, teaming proposals, uh, as teaming projects, for example, where you have uh, more advanced and some less advanced countries working together and also exchanging approaches. And we all learn from this, all of the countries. Um, and there's also further integration into a European community through the open access and the, ver uh, the various uh, integration activity that we also fund, co-fund. We, for Western Balkan countries, we offer dedicated uh, info days, also training workshops so that they get uh, familiarized with the techniques, because I mentioned this is one of the big problems why the success rate is not higher. Um, we also, uh, in the past, and we still try to offer support in preparation of proposals. Now, this is mainly going through the uh, two-phase, uh, through our two-phase uh, uh, proposal uh, schedule, where in the first phase, when the uh, beamline scientists or the uh, instrument scientists receive proposals, they get in touch with the uh, researchers and can also work on improvement on various proposals. And uh, the other opportunity that we have currently is uh, this year we are funding 19 uh, PhDs and we will be publishing, advertising these PhD posts uh, Europe-wide and we, I would like to particularly invite communities from Western Balkans to apply to this. 
Uh, now uh, I will spend a few more words about uh, opportunities of uh, research infrastructures in more broadly, not just say. First of all, there is um, the opportunity for the users uh, to, from Western Balkans to use these facilities. Now, um, for users, this, uh, these research infrastructures actually are incredibly important, uh, underexploited potential uh, for Western Balkan countries because we have heard before from um, uh, Klaus and also Vladimir that there's a problem of brain drain. Um, well, researchers, uh, well, several studies show that what young researchers mainly want is good working conditions. And uh, research, high quality research infrastructures are sometimes hard to uh, find, harder to find in some of the Western Balkans countries, although um, there are some really uh, prominent uh, research infrastructures. Now, um, they can access the ones in Europe and st while still working from home, so they can have a very good scientific career by making more use of these European research infrastructures. Uh, for the users, uh, there are the PhD programs, uh, in addition to ours, which is, uh, which is open more broadly, Electra plans a, a synchrotron in, here in Trieste, plans a dedicated PhD call. They will, they will probably award two PhDs to Western, Balka, uh, to, to Western Balkan, Balkan researchers and two, uh, two postdoc scholarships. Now, another opportunity to collaborate with the research infrastructures in Europe uh, is to uh, have your own high, built uh, or uh, set up your own high quality self-standing research infrastructures in Western Balkans. Uh, for example, uh, SAIST, uh, which is uh, uh, in planning stage, um, uh, currently in uh, by, um, and the leader is uh, Montenegro at the moment. Well, at the moment, the leader is Montenegro. Now, this uh, self-standing research infrastructures in Western Balkans will contribute to better integration of your community through the international users that will come to your community bringing all their knowledge and also through collaboration with other European research infrastructures. Uh, in addition to the self-standing research infrastructures, you could also consider uh, membership in variety of different European infrastructures, distributed ones, for example, um, and uh, the single-sided ones. Among the distributed ones, uh, Serbia is currently a member of uh, SESDA, DARAYA, and SERIC. Now, particularly SESDA and DARAYA, the, the social sciences ones, uh, are particularly attractive to Western Balkan countries uh, because, well, basically, uh, the social sciences do require less of the heavy investments, typically. Um, so I would ask you to consider this opportunity. Um, now, I'm not sure whether North Macedonia is a member of SESDA because I did not um, receive the confirmation, so the, I left a question mark there. Now, another opportunity when it comes to also research infrastructures, but um, also uh, research in general in Europe will be offered by the renewed research, Europe, uh, uh, by renewed uh, European research area where uh, inclusiveness is one of the uh, four proposed uh, priorities of the new era. And that will probably be linked to the new opportunities, also new funding for the, uh, uh, also for Western uh, Balkan countries. So this is all for this contribution. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jana. Thanks for pointing to the importance of research infrastructures um, and also to join existing research infrastructures which are available because it is important to see these uh, research infrastru uh, infrastructures also as an opportunity for brain circulation uh, instead of brain drain. Um, dear colleagues, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, the audience, um, 
before we finalize this uh, session, before we terminate it, um, I kindly ask you again to post some questions if you have some. We have at least one already, um, which is a question about um, citizen science. It's addressed to Mariana. I'm going to read it and then I read it loud and then uh, I'm going to ask Mariana probably to give a reflection on this. The question is as follows. Do you know for any valuable citizen science example throughout the region and how to increase their influence and contribution to the scientific research and its programming and execution? I think it's a very valuable question. Um, um, and there's also some skepticism, obviously, within this question, what uh, citizen science really can contribute to scientific advancement. Mariana, do you like to share with us some thoughts? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. It is a really a good question. And first, I, I have to say that um, through Terrifica project, we did uh, a really thorough research on um, different projects uh, in the region. And uh, actually, we didn't find that many uh, projects that are uh, related to citizen science that originate from the region. We found several okay, European projects uh, that had partners from the region. And, uh, but I wanted to tell you more about uh, one of the projects that uh, um, actually uh, took my focus. And it was um, a project that's called Mosquito Alert which is originally a Spanish uh, uh, project. And um, it is a project dealing with um, um, specific kind of tiger uh, mosquitoes that are um, uh, an invasive species that is actually um, um, causing uh, different problems like yellow fever, um, not only in Spain, but in Italy, in uh, Croatia, Montenegro, Serbia. And uh, the, the um, coordinators of the project, actually researchers, created um, an application for mobile phones uh, where you can um, actually post a photo when you see this tiger mosquito. And then this photo is um, uh, actually um, going through a, a process where real researchers uh, validate the photo and say whether this is the tiger mosquito or not. And then uh, the location of the mosquito that is, uh, uh, is um, actually pinned to the map. And of course, uh, there are not so many um, contributions from Western Balkans to the map, but there are some, and these contributions are, uh, let's say, without any promotion of citizen science. So that means that people are willing to, um, to join these kind of projects, but at the moment, there are not so many projects that offer this kind of uh, um, possibilities. And uh, also, I, I have to say that um, through Terrifica project, uh, we saw that people are really interested in, interested in the city of Belgrade to, uh, to contribute. But uh, what really we need to focus on uh, is, on one hand, to foster this community, to try to explain them that uh, if they join this kind of research and if they uh, give their um, opinions, then um, we will come back to them. So we will acknowledge that and uh, we will include the public later on in implementation. They must be so, so their uh, opinion must be not only validated, but also they have to somehow feel uh, that this is what their contribution is something which is important. And um, I, I really believe that this is only start and that we uh, in Western Balkans have to work more on this concept of citizen science. And I'm, I'm inviting uh, my colleagues and, uh, uh, in the session to tell uh, about maybe their opinion, do they are they aware of any um, projects in their own countries, and to try to see whether this is uh, some concept that lives in Western Balkans. Thank you very much, uh, Mariana. Maybe I try to also give a, a short uh, 
feedback from my side. Um, well, we are involved also in several citizen science projects. We also have quite advanced this concept of citizen, uh, citizen science in Europe. Um, as you mentioned, citizens are very much involved uh, in, in research projects, more and more at different agenda levels. Sometimes they set the agenda, sometimes they're just providing data. Um, I think what is important and what we should not miss is also the idea to involve citizens in innovation projects. Um, this was not asked in the question, but I think that's an important aspect. Um, and I know, for instance, from the Carables project, where it's about the production of personalized health products. And this is really done by citizens together with maker spaces uh, for persons who have such individual demands that usually the market don't serve them. So that's really innovation, so to say, for the people, also done by the people and with support of research, of course. Um, Ah, there's another question, again from Sala Free. Thank you very much. Um, what is the role of the Western Balkan science diaspora in driving progress in the region, and how can we attract, attract them back? Thank you. Very, another very important question from your side. Uh, Sala Free, who wants to answer? Just give me a hand signal. Vladimir, please, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's a very interesting uh, question because uh, throughout my several years of experience with uh, running the InnoFit, uh, a lot of people are asking about uh, the connections with uh, uh, other Macedonians that went abroad and how to actually connect with them. I must say that uh, uh, we do have connections, but um, the question uh, as it's asked, it says, what is the role of the Western Balkan science diaspora in driving progress in the region? I think that their role uh, uh, can be bigger, but uh, it's not only up to the diaspora, basically. There has to be a more systematic approach from the Western Balkan side to actually uh, provide a, some kind of tangible system, operational system of cooperating with, uh, with the science diaspora. Because um, I have many colleagues that went abroad. We have very good connections we uh, invite each other in different projects, so we do cooperate on that level. But uh, I think that it can be better if it's more systematic and it has a more, uh, let's say, framework from where uh, we can mutually cooperate. So I think that it should be addressed on a maybe a state level so that there is a, a clear uh, framework or how we can uh, incentivize, let's say, the cooperation with, uh, with the science diaspora. Thank you very much, Vladimir. Sala Free, I hope these answers uh, somehow are satisfying your interest. Um, as I see no other question popping up now from the audience, I'm now trying to uh, conclude this session. So first of all, I would really like to thank our speakers, Jana Kola, Mariana Brukic, Nena Nikolovska, and Vladimir Atanasovsky, thank you very much for your inputs. I also want, li would like to thank uh, Desiree Pekatz and Elena Rister from uh, the International Service Facility operated by the European Commission who organized these, uh, this, this session here. Um, warm thank you from, from my side as well. And I also would like to thank Dario, our technician, who was guiding us now through this uh, session process. Thank you very much, uh, Dario. Um, I think it's time for, uh, now I'm addressing the audience, um, it's time for a pit stop now. Um, use the chance and uh, connect again to the other sessions here, which are provided uh, under the framework of ESOF. And yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you the next time face-to-face -face physically again. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye.